there is not among men different different kinds and species in the manner that they are found among other species. Unlike in other species, there is not among men differences in the kind or species with regard to their eyes, ears, mouths, nose, lips, eyebrows, and even their hair. All are the same type. From the neck to the groin, from the shoulder to the hip, from the back to the chest, it's all one kind of men. Hands, feet, fingers, nails, calves, thighs are all standard, and so are the features of voice and of color. Unlike other creatures, men do not have characteristics which distinguish them at birth. Mm -hmm. They do not have the variety of inherited features that other creatures have. In fact, in the case of humans, differences are differences only by convention. For example, the setta. If a man keeps cows and lives off their produce, then we know that he is a farmer. We do not call him a Brahmin. Similarly, when a man lives by a particular craft, then we call him we know him as a craftsman. We do not call him a Brahmin. If he supports himself by trading, then we know he is a merchant, not a Brahmin. When a man gets paid for serving other people, then we call him a servant rather than a Brahmin. A man who lives by taking other, pe other people's things is known as a thief rather than a Brahmin. A, a bowman who sells his skill is known as a soldier. We do not call him a Brahmin. A man whose work is performing rites and ceremonies is known as a priest and not as a Brahmin. And the man who lives off the produce of countries and villages is known as the landlord or king. We do not call him Brahmin. I do not call a man a Brahmin because of his mother or because of his breeding. Just because a man is entitled to be called sir, it does not mean that he is free from habit and attachment. He who is free from attachment, he who is free from grasping, is the person I call Brahmin. When all of the chains are, sh are shattered, when there is no more agitation and a man has freed himself and thrown off his shackles, that is the person I call a Brahmin. He who has cut off the strap of ignorance and harness of false views, who has removed obstacles and is enlightened, is one I call a Brahmin. He who without getting annoyed endures insults and violence, whose strength and army is endurance, is one I call a Brahmin. There is no anger, there is no ignorance, there is only strength of restraint and the power of pure action. So there's no habitual repetition, no rebirth. This is what I call a Brahman. If a water drop on if if like a water drop on a lotus leaf, a mustard seed on top of a needle, sense desires roll off and leave no trace in him. In such a person I call a Brahman. 